This video is sponsored by Join Cycling, the best adaptive training platform for your cycling goals. I've used it to much success. Download it now and get a 30-day free trial, no strings attached, through the link down below. Flesh Wallone 2024, 200Ks. Normally, this is just a watts per kilo test up the murder we They do four repetitions of the 1,300-meter climb with some really steep pinches before the race started. 10 degrees... Not sunny, but not that bad either. Schelmo's the race favourite, as well as Turns and Pidcock, and Ineos and Trek were dutifully controlling for their race favourites. It all looked like a pretty normal flesh will line up to that point. There was Mark Hirschi going to get some stuff from the UAE car. He's got a neck warmer, but otherwise in short sleeves, no gloves. Just a normal aero jersey with a gilet over the top. But then with about 115 k's to go, we started seeing teams go to the back and getting some more clothes on including ef education easy post then arkea bnb hotel they've got riders with long finger gloves on full blown winter gear but some riders don't some riders have no gloves on at this point at all with 112 k's to go so what did some teams know what did some teams not know there was a storm coming coat their f 110 k's to go it starts to bucket down pidcocks putting a jacket on and trying to put some long finger gloves on. UAE team Emirates with Novak, though, start to lift the pace. He's just in a jersey with arm warmers. Here she's on his wheel. Almeida's dropping one of their leaders, maybe, and it starts to hail while they're splits in the peloton. You can see the hail bouncing off Cam Wirth's back, and this is the most split up flesh will own has been any time i've ever watched it it's first repetition of murder we there's already splits in the peloton the uas smashing it it's so cold that the riders that didn't have gloves on they're trying to put a jacket on their hands are shaking they can't do it on the bike van seven on big riders that have gone back to the car are trying to come back he's telling the motorbike to help him and uae don't stop they're pacing and pacing pacing splitting up the race but then here she starts to feel the cold he's talking to juan ayuso saying I thought this was supposed to be a spring race. And whilst he's off the back, their leader came second in Amstel. UAE are still smashing it with Ulysses and Doman Novak. So they put themselves in a spot of bother in the end. Riders are trying to warm their hands up. And it seemed the storm really caught a lot of riders off guard. Did not take Uno, Uno X off guard. And suddenly, we don't see UAE again. All their riders DNF. Schelmose, you see, he's coming back. He's put a jacket on, so he's had to go back to the car. But at what cost? And maybe it's too late because the storm abates at this point. And if the cold's already got into you, there's not too much you can do if you're already wet and shivering underneath. And we start to see turns. Second favorite, gone. Guru, gone. EF. Smashing it now for Carapaz and Healy. But no, it went back to get a jacket. Still no gloves. He's coming back to the Hirschi group, which is his group two on the road, not the Peloton. Schelmos is losing the wheel. The first favorite for the race. We come down to the second Murdui, and he's dropped. And this is, I've never seen this in Flesh Wallone before. The weather played a massive impact in this race. Tom Pidcock, out of the race, abandons as well. And all the top favorites, gone. <laughs> with 65 kilometers to go, you know X entire team makes the group or group or peloton. This is the peloton. You know X with seven riders in the group. Yeah, Johannesson said they knew the bad weather was coming, and so they dressed for it. A lot of them had head warmers, long sleeves, long uh, gloves on. Sir and Cry Anderson anticipates because domestiques are thin on the ground, and at this moment, the peloton takes a bit of a pause to go back to the cars. Get dressed properly. Cosnefroy did. Benoit being helped, getting a glove on instead of chasing. You know, X try to send Hulgard up the road, but he gets brought back. And Sir and Kra extends his gap to a minute with 41 k's to go. Healy probes with an attack marked by You know, X and Visma. 20 seconds goes out again to Sir and Kra. Healy goes again, this time marked, I think, by Quinton Hermans on Alberson de Koenig, and the gap then goes out a little bit more to 130. So looking good. Second last murder we for Sir and Cry Anderson, although it's a long time to be solo 60Ks, and unfortunately for him, the other the favourites now left in the race, Stephen Williams starts to jump. Santiago Buitrago, Maxim Van Gils, Richard Carapaz, and Kevin Volkala are in the group behind chasing. And so Williams decides no point doing a 30k solo when they're just going to swap turns in a group of four. He waits wisely for them. 
But we've seen everyone tip their hand. We now know who is probably the strongest in that group. Norwegians chasing Stana Mithit and Uno X chasing that group of four. And Søren Kras still a minute up the road, but he begins to lose time rapidly in the up and down hills. Uno X do a fantastic job bringing back on the Côte d'Ereff as well as the sort of favorites group that went up the road. But now... Who's going to jump? Who's in this group? Is Williams? He's got no teammates. He's on his own. Unix have the right idea. They try to get riders up the road before the last murder week because they're not confident that Tobias Hall and Johansson will just win the race easily. But Stevie Williams is everywhere. His fourth wheel, he was watching that Unix move. His fifth wheel going into this corner, he gets onto the back of uh, the EF rider, Carapaz. And when Unix jump and Tim Van Dyke tries to anticipate as well, Guess who's there? With no teammates, Stephen Williams with Clément Champoussin on his wheel. So Stevie Williams was the strongest rider in this race, not just on the second last murder wee, not just on the final murder wee. He shut down these moves beforehand, and then the lead-outs came. Decathlon Ajdezer with Bruno Armorel for Benoit Cosnefoy who just won Brabant Pale last Wednesday. Tim Van Dyke leading out for Tej Benoit. And it was a very cagey murder. We know climbing domestiques left to lead anybody out. It's actually five across, everyone trying to block the road and just hold their positions. Tom Schoons for Little Trek. Stevie Williams at this moment was a little bit boxed in. The barriers come into the road, or the road narrows, and you can see it's two lines of four. Anybody can win, but actually when the gap opens up to the barriers on the left-hand side, he saw 300 meters to go. Stevie Williams jumps, Kovznesh was caught napping, but no one had the legs to respond anyway. The Welshman wins La Flèche Wallonne, the biggest win of his career, comfortably, the best throughout the race, managed the weather conditions really well, and after winning TDU in January, he backs it up with a massive classics victory. Here's what he had to say after the race. I've been watching this race for years, and uh, I've always wanted to come here with, with, with decent legs to, to try and win it, and... Uh, yeah, today with the weather, I, I, I do enjoy racing in this kind of weather, and uh, yeah, to come away with a victory and oh, I was just over the moon. Yeah, just the boys backed me all day, and uh, they gave me the best chance to try and do a, a result today, and uh, come away with the the win here is special, really special. Kevin Vokala comes second, another big result for Arkea BNB in the classics. Then Van Hills, Kosnifra, Buitrago, Johansson, Gregoire, Godon, Benoit, and Guillaume Martin. Usually it takes me about half an hour to prepare the Flesh Will Learn video, but this was the longest one ever with 100 k's of action. Brutal for the riders, very exciting for us. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you with the women's tomorrow morning. Ciao.